Welcome to Mighty Married Moms. Join us at our kitchen table twice a week as the Mighty Married Moms, Debbie, Linda, Wendy, invite spectacular guests to weigh in on staying sexy, vibrant, and healthy, building marriages with soul-satisfying connection, raising happy, healthy, successful kids. Conversations with Mighty Married Moms will bring you closer to the life you really want. Episode 92. Today's show is brought to you by Deborah C. Owen, Family and Life Coach at YouCanRaiseGreatKids.com. If you are tired of worrying about the choices your kid is making or tired of the stress of constantly arguing with your kids or them arguing with each other, then don't wait until you are truly desperate. Get the help you and your family need and deserve today. Connect with your kids with calm compassion. Call Deborah Owen at 978-835-4354. Hi, and welcome to Mighty Married Moms. I'm Linda from All Well Breaks Loose. And I'm Wendy from connectagain.org. And I'm Debbie from youcanraisegreatkids.com. And thank you for joining us today. We had a wonderful, wonderful conversation mm -hmm. yep. with Lauren Reidinger. Uh, for if you don't know her, she's an inspirational entrepreneur and internet mogul. Um, probably the best place to find out the most about her immediately is laurensworld.com, but you can certainly Google Lauren Reidinger and you'll find pages. Yes. Pages. L-O-R-E-N. That's what I was going to say. Yes. Not L-A-U. L-O-R-E-N. Yep. Right. L-O-R-E-N. Writing. E-R. Writing. E -R. E -R. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you will find, you'll find tons, tons and tons and tons of stuff. And, uh, but we just really had, just, you know, she is, the thing I, I love about her, you know, she owns this uh, multi-million dollar uh, website. She's a creator of this gorgeous cosmetic line. She's, she does all kinds of charitable organizations. She's, um, you know, she's really an internet um, maven and, um, you know, social media maven. Yeah. And uh, so the, the thing is that I, I work with her and her, um, her one of her companies that um, she and her husband run. And I have, I have emailed her personally, like, hey, Lauren. I think we need to have that so she has this uh, shopping site or shop shop.com and I and I remember one this is just one example and I said Lauren I really like the store anthropology and we don't have that do you think we could get that on our on our site like I really <laughs> I want to shop there but I want to shop through the site because as she was saying earlier in a conversation you get cash back and I like to I like to save money wherever I can and so she wrote me right back and she goes I'm already on it I love that store too you know Excellent. and like and there's thousands and thousands of people in this company, millions and millions of customers, and here's little me going, hey, you know, I really like this store. <laughs> she's like, of course, yeah, I'm definitely working That's on that right. one. She's very and approachable. She's yeah. so approachable, and yeah. soon after, um, you know, uh, the store was on our site. So, uh, so and, and, you know, even for our interview, you know, she was just so gracious and really um, yep. uh, wonderful and happy to talk with us today and talk with all of you and have mm -hmm. you be able to listen to, you know, what, what she said. And, and it, you know, she's a very inspiring woman because she's a mom. She's even a grandmother right now. <laughs> and uh, she Crazy. went from, you know, nothing to uh, all these amazing things. And so sometimes when you look at somebody like Lauren, you think it's always been there. She just kind of jumped right into where she's at. And, but that's not the truth at all, and it's not the truth for most, most entrepreneurs. Right. There's really a long story there and a lot of struggle, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, as Lauren what said. What did they say? The overnight sensation that took 12 years or something? Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Or 20 years or right. yeah. so many entrepreneurs right. are right. like that. Well, yeah, because yeah, it's an overnight sensation to the, to the viewer, yeah. to the reader, to the, to the client, perhaps. Yeah. But the other person, the person that's actually showing up has been working, working, working. Blood, sweat, and tears. And I love what she said about, you know, putting in... 10 or 12 hour day being a mom being being um, a businesswoman and then you know at 9 10 o'clock at night when people are in bed she finds me time yeah you know you just have to find it where you can find it and she said she said sorry to be the bearer of bad news but it's about loss of sleep it isn't about <laughs> which my husband would argue against vociferously would he in what oh, way yeah yeah well he gives me a hard time because I'm doing a lot of the same kind of thing right, right now right. with my business and right. and uh, he's losing like, sleep you're losing sleep he's like you got to get some sleep you got to go to bed and to be fair um, there are, it, there are a lot of studies that show that sleep hygiene is really important. It is. Oh, it's absolutely yeah. important. But, but there are times there are when, times in your life when you're when, an entrepreneur, yeah. and it's just not going to happen. And Lauren was just push. like, I'm just going to be realistic with you. This is it's what just, takes. It's going to happen. Sometimes you're not going to get the sleep that takes. you need. You know, yeah. and uh, and that's the that's the life and sacrifice of being an entrepreneur. However. As she also said, 20 years later, 
are 20 some years later building um, these companies. She's now a grandmother. Her daughter has these two beautiful children and she gets to set her time and her schedule however she wants That's because right. she put all that sweat so equity in. So here's my question. Did, was she able to spend time with her daughter too while her daughter was growing up? Oh yeah. Oh, and that's what, was, well, okay. I thought that's what, what she, she kind of said. Was she like, said, dinner's at six every night. Even though we were so busy and we were so, you know, driven to build these this company, um, she said Monday night was family night and six o'clock that, that was dinner time and, and that was not negotiable. What about the rest of the week? You know, I'm well, just I'm just curious. She didn't say specifically didn't, she, on because I would hate to think that I can't enjoy my family until I have grandkids. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh no no I think okay. I think her point that was, was my impression. I just want to you know clarify. Yeah here. no I think her point was okay. that she they made specific times to be with family. They knew that that was important to maintain mm-hmm. um, the core family values that they have, and they're okay. a very close family. Um, <clears throat> you know I mean I've, yeah. I've seen them all together. They're very very close, and so even with all that going on, they made sure this and, and she was really encouraging anybody who wants to be an entrepreneur that you have to put your family first because that's otherwise you're not right. going to be happy and otherwise your, your marriage is going to fall apart and you know mm-hmm. who knows what else can happen but you have to block out those times mm-hmm. um, where this is family time you right. know and, and and on a weekly basis on a nightly basis and then whatever else you know you're going to block in family vacations or trips or this or that or um, you know and I'm sure she was at everything that her daughter did I know and her daughter took dance lessons and all kinds of stuff okay. and, you know, I know okay. she she was doing all that all that mom stuff, stuff. While you know, um, building the staying up with her late at night yeah. and getting to bed at one o'clock in the morning, getting up again and saying hello to your daughter. Let's <laughs> do this again. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, there, right. there were a couple of key things that I picked out too. Um, one is that she be, she calls herself the master juggler, and I feel that way too. I feel like I'm juggling so many plates and trying not to let any of them fall. And once in a while they do, but for mm. the most part, that's that's what we do. I think, mm-hmm. and and I think. Um, women tend to do that more than men do. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. that men don't, but I think women tend to do it more. Mm-hmm. And, and I think we just do it by, we, we do it naturally. Yes. I'm not sure why. I, there are certainly no men jugglers too. Yeah. But I think that uh, they've come to it later. <laughs> right. I think we start out women as jugglers right, somehow. Right. Well, it's the way our brain is wired, right? I mean, yeah. they, I've heard it described, yeah. right? Men's Spaghetti. brains are compartments, right? right. And they have compartments. And, we're like and they even have they even have a compartment of nothing, right? You know, because men have to go to their nothing place. And, a lot. You know, right? Have you ever asked a guy, so what are you thinking about? Nothing. nothing. Right? And you think, how is that possible? You know, I, I actually I actually went to a, a lecture this past weekend and um, uh, this guy was giving a um, talk, uh, Yardley Wine was giving a talk about men's brains and he was saying, we have this compartment of nothing. He goes, and you women, you just can't come into our nothing box. So, <laughs> so you say... Uh, hey, honey, what's, what are you thinking about? Nothing. And, you, and, you, and for women, that's very frustrating um, because our brains are wired like a network of wires. We're all over it. And so we're like, <laughs> how can you be thinking and... about nothing? You can't think about nothing. Actually, and, you and... Know, it's so funny because my husband frequently asks me, what are you thinking about? And it drives me crazy. And I finally just say nothing because... As you say, my brain is like this. It's not nothing. It's just so much I can't even right. I can't but even vocalize it right now. <laughs> For men, it's actually nothing. It actually really is nothing. And he said, and if a woman tries to get into the nothing box, the first thing that you would do is go, you know, you need some curtains over there. <laughs> yeah. It would never be nothing, right? right so right. we're just wired differently. Right. And, mm-hmm. and Lauren was saying that too. She's like, we're just, let's, you know, we yeah. are totally wired differently. And I, and we are better multitaskers because it's just how we yeah. are wired. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not that anybody can multitask too many things successfully, but, right. but I think that we are very good at juggling and we are good at juggling home and work. And, but as Lauren said, if you're going to be good at it, you need to say these. Th- these are where. Well, who, what are my values? What yes. do I value the most? And I need to block time out for that because if mm-hmm. I don't, I'm going to start going yes to everybody, and I'm going to start going. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. And oh, I, I need to be there. And, and instead of saying, okay, this is what I need. And she she said, you know, have to do that with your spouse too. You have to tell your spouse, I need this from you. This is yes. not going to be all my right. responsibility. You know, we are a team, and we need to do this together. You need to make those boundaries very clear mm-hmm. for yourself, for your family so that you are able to juggle those things if you have those kind of aspirations or it doesn't really matter anything that you want to do if you want to um, yes. if it's not being an entrepreneur if it's going back and taking singing lessons or um, you know learning the guitar or whatever it is it's going to take extra time away from what you're doing at home mm-hmm. um, it's important to say I'm not going to get so wrapped up that I'm going to forget about my family right. you know and then feel bad about myself because I did I feel bad just, it's like a, that full conscious living yeah it's like living yeah, like on that. purpose again we haven't yeah. used those words in a long time 
on Mighty Married Moms, but it is. It's sort of like just, as opposed to just going along, going along and being mindless about things, to really step back and say, wait a minute, how can I live a purposeful life? Yeah. Like, for instance, mm -hmm. my husband and I, for the first time ever, in before we were married and since we've been married, we had to do the um, IRS extension so that we didn't file by April 15th. We're going to file by o October 15th. And both of us are like, that's never happening again. The, the, the anxiety and the, 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 the pressure and, you know, and st you, you think that I would say, oh, we, get, we missed April 15th. We've got the extension. We'll get it in by May 1st. That was what it was in my head. Didn't happen that way. <laughs> so so he, he and I are very committed. We're going to get the online, you know, whatever that's called, the green system, whatever. Uh. Those, those systems, you know, and we're going to plug in everything so that the next, next year it's just like, bing, hit a button, taxes come flying out of the computer. And that's done. And it's done. We're not ever I love that you. image. I know. I know, right? Well, won't that be fun? And right the up. money, the return will come right on back. Right on back. So easy. Yeah. But it, but that's like purposeful as opposed to what we've been doing, which is just sort of like mindless this past six months or whatever it's been. So there's just something really therapeutic and good about taking some time and saying, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, how do I really want to calibrate my life and live purposefully rather than not? And she also brought that up in terms of anything that, she was, that she's been thinking about as endeavors to take on. She says, now, what are the worst case scenarios? And if, and if I can't deal with any of the, like if she says, I, I want a, a new makeup line that does X, Y, Z, I'm just making things up. And so she kind of follows down all the possible things that could go wrong or people could object she's to. Anticipating the problems. Anticipating the problems and saying, and if prepared. I can't meet them or if I can't surmount them, then it's not worth my time. So her husband always says to her, how is it that everything you do works so well? She says, because I've thought it through. Mm -hmm. And I found that really, really valuable. It's not that I don't think things through, but I, I also get... I get um, glasses half full kind of like, oh, I'm sure it will work because I want it to. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. So I found that really valuable. Really, really valuable yeah. piece of advice. Yeah, anticipating problems is always a good thing. Yeah. Whether it's uh, starting a new business or um, starting a new activity or moving to a new location. Moving to a new location. Or, right. What, starting a new job. Anything. What, anything. Anticipating the problems and trying in advance to uh, well, be, prepared be prepared. Be prepared. What the, and if, there's, if yeah. the price is too big, then it's not worth it. Yeah. But I, I think that's really valuable advice. Yeah. I think it's also really important to, um, you know, know, too, that... You know, someone like Lauren, you know, started building the MarketAmericaShop.com alongside her husband. They started this business and she started to build her own brand. Um, but as you build more and more companies, as you become successful with one, you've already uh, offloaded some of the things that you had to do at the beginning. In the beginning, she had to be jack of all trades for that company. Right. You know, she had to do everything. I mean, there's stories of her like shipping and receiving and, you know, <laughs> you know just doing the, uh, the Wrapping every packages, job, yeah. right? But as you grow those things are taken care of so so then you could take on an, another business or another business or another idea or another activity or another something else because you've offloaded some of the things that you were doing you don't have to do anymore because you created the success anyway. yeah. yeah and that part becomes on autopilot so mm -hmm. then you're able to create more so it's not to give the impression that you know she doesn't have time for anything or anybody because she's doing all these things it's she's offloaded some of the stuff that she doesn't really need to do anymore to other people which is smart that's what smart people do when they when they start when they the more successful you are actually the more free time you have because you're able yeah. to delegate to other people exactly. the things that aren't worth your time right i mean it's not worth it, it's not worth her time to be wrapping packages right. because she need her her brain value power. her her values and her brain power correct? exactly yeah. Yeah. exactly <coughs> absolutely yeah yeah so it's very interesting and i really like to what she said it's easy to quit and sometimes, I, for me, I'll say for myself, I feel like, oh, my goodness, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, whatever it is. Work, you know, a relationship with somebody that I care about or whatever. It's, easy to, it's easier to quit, but it feels like smarter somehow or, some, you know, like it's a wise choice to just go, I'm just going to back off from this. But that's really the easier way out rather than finding another way to make it work, especially if it's something that's important, like a relationship that I really want to work out, work on. Or, you know, like she says, every time you feel like, it, oh, it's just too hard, just stay with it because something, a door is going to open just around the corner. And I found that to be really true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really, really true that, that when you're the most exhausted and the most ready to give up, you just push through just that one and you go, oh, my goodness, something just opened up and made it 
so much easier. Might not be the total answer, but some things yeah. come through that right. gives you encouragement to keep on going. I call them breadcrumbs from God. Like, here's one. oh good, there's one more. Okay, I, I guess I'm still on. I'm still doing all right. <laughs> yeah. I, guess I can follow the trail of breadcrumbs. Because if you keep going, the signs are always there. Yeah, you know when yep. it's the right choice. Yep. And and as Lauren said too, even though she does try to figure out as much as she possibly can before she starts. The journey is never smooth sailing. Smooth. Okay, I figured it all out. Now there will be no problems, you know. Right. Of course there are problems. And right. of course and it never pans out the way you think it's going to. And problems arise that you didn't expect. And, you know, but, but you have to decide in advance that I'm going to be able to overcome those challenges and those mm -hmm. obstacles. And mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, do it till it works. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what most people don't do. And she said that too. You know, most people quit before the success happens. They get frustrated and they go, oh. I, I, you know, it's not going to work, and then they're just around the corner from something magical happening where they're on to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's uh, I think we hear a lot of people talk about that too. Yeah, yeah, that, definitely, yeah. Yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's out there. It's out there. It's just uh, how old do I have to be to really take it in and do it? <laughs> and hopefully, not much older than I am now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. And the right? last thing that she said, and and we can kind of close out with this, is talking about success, which is. Um, Focusing on managing the peace that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. That's really how you mm -hmm. determine what your success is. Is um, you know, it's not money. It's 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 really in, in what is it that makes you happy. Yeah. And honestly, the things that make us happy. I mean, they've done studies on this. Things don't make us happy. The thing that makes us happy is experiences mm -hmm. and relationships. And, yeah. 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 Totally. And so that's how we should determine our success. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. 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 Because right. what would all that money be if you were miserable with everybody? You turned around. And you go, oh, not you again in the bed. Ugh. Or you know, <laughs> you're my daughter. Ugh. You know, like what would that? That would be awful. Yeah. Well, what was that? We on um, one of our other shows we talked about the statistically um, between. Zero and fifty thousand in income. There's kind of a a, oh, yeah. a broad difference in happiness, happiness because you're able to just to have a little more comfort in your life, right. like a roof over your head, maybe mm -hmm. buying the food that you need and all that, and you're not um, homeless, yeah. uh, you know. But fifty thousand to a million, there was virtually almost no difference. I think so. it was seventy thousand to be 70, honest, but but seventy thousand, yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. that's the cutoff. It, you know, seventy thousand and is above a, is 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 no happier than seventy, mm -hmm. right? For right. household income, mm -hmm. right. not individual income. Right. Fascinating, you know? Yeah. So unless you're really working on what makes you feel peaceful, right? Mm -hmm. That, you know, it's that's not true to be money. Success. It's not money. It's not things. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, well, I hope Lauren can come back. She yeah. said she would like to. She, she did. She jumped in. She said, enjoyed the back. Mighty Mary Yay. Moms. They all enjoyed the Mighty we Mary We enjoyed moms. Lauren, our Mighty Mary Mom, yeah. uh, featuring today. Um, we love you, Lauren. Thank you so much. It was a very inspiring conversation. Yes. And I hope all of you listeners will listen to that episode. If you haven't yet, if this is the first exposure you've had to Mighty Married Moms, uh, definitely go back and listen to Lauren Reidinger. She's amazing. And thank you for being with us today. And please go to iTunes, give us a rating and review, mm -hmm. and tell all your friends and family about us we have lots of episodes many many wonderful guests um lots that you uh, of topics that you want to know i know every week that we talk to somebody we we get off of our own podcast and go wow, wow that is, so that is cool. really amazing right because <laughs> There's, you know, we only pick really, really good people. That's right. Because um, we're trying to give you the best of what we can give you and help you live a more extraordinary life and a more a life that's more close to the one you really want. One you really want, yeah. absolutely. So thank you again. I hope you have a fabulous day. And uh, go to our website, MightyMarriedMoms.com, and you can check out more episodes and find out more about us. See you thank next you. time. Take bye. care. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Mighty Married Moms. Tune in twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays to meet fascinating and inspiring guests who will help you create the life you've always wanted. You can find these episodes and special gifts just for you at MightyMarriedMoms.com as well as a link to our Facebook community where we continue the conversation around the kitchen table. Please also help share the love by leaving a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.